All right, today we're going to be picking the Nemeth NF2, which is quite similar to the Nemeth NF4, uh, but the NF4 uh, is a dimple lock, whereas this is just a pin tumbler. Uh, the NF2 also has a couple of extra pins coming from the bottom, but this has nothing like that, just normal pin tumbler. Um, these are ranked at blue belt, which I think possibly depending how you get it bitted is criminally underrated. Um, these things can be truly annoying to pick. Um, it's taken me quite a while to get this one worked out properly. I'm using this Peterson pick, uh, mostly because it's really stiff um, and thick enough. And I find that this really wants quite stiff tension to get past the um, standard pins or you'll see them when I come. Um, so first up, we click out a four, not four, um, five and six, and then three. We did not fall into a false set, so we need to taper that off on six. All right, now we can let off the tension a bit and find that counter rotation. So still want to be reasonably stiff, just enough to, at least I find that makes it work best. All right, so we've got two spools up front, one and two, we'll do two first. Two, got it, nice, back into the false set. It's the end of the spools are tapered as well, so sometimes you don't go back to the false set and they need a bit of extra. If you keep the tension high enough, nothing seems to fall back down. All right, let's see if we get under one. One's hard because it's a bit of a high lift and right up front, nothing to lever off. Ah, pick it stuck. There we go. Uh, also, sorry, I'm a little bit sick still. This is what happens when you send a child to daycare is you just end up sick all the time. So apologies the sniffing sounds. Let's get this thing pulled apart. I'm well happy to be done with this one. Um, yes, if you want to really play with something tricky that uses tapered pins, oh god damn I left that C clip remover in the other room. Um, I've got the cut wrench, we'll try to do it with that. Uh, yeah, if you really want to punish yourself with, ooh, alright let's like that. With tapered pins, get yourself a Nemef. They've got great tolerances, um, and they just they just suck. All right, if we should just go to the other room and get my secret pliers, but instead we're going to try and do this the stupid way. A little bit more of a bend. Yeah, that should come off now. Right, that did work, but that is not the correct way to take off a C-clip. Use C-clip pliers um, when they're these kind of bendy ones, and you don't want to take them on and off too much, or they'll snap from metal fatigue. They're just a terrible design. Um, all right, there was our bidding, but you will see. I think that's reflecting a bit. There we go. So lots of really high, really high, a bit lower, a bit lower, quite a low one in the middle. But Nemef are sneaky, um, which you will see when we got this. So the actual pinning looks like, kind of looks nothing like the key. Okay, follow up, shim it. Uh, so we've got the slots at the back, so it's a good idea to shim for them. So, right, see, they're all nicely lined up at shear. If we pull this out, tap those down a bit. Um, no, down, down, down. Right, so compare that with that. So you would think pin three should be really low, and yet here it's sitting, one of the ones we actually have to touch, you know, like only a tiny bit. These ones at the back, like, they're just, 
you know, like this one's at the same height as this one at the back, but it's way lower down on the key, so they're um, deceptive. Not a good idea to try and look at the key uh, bidding to work out what you need to do in an MF. You just have to just have to work them out. Just do it by feel or gut it and look at it, but oops. That's because they use there's no special mods to the core. They've just got some drill protection rods, actually quite a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, which is quite impressive. Um, there's that keyway, nice shot down there. So it's wide open, stick the pick way all the way up from the bottom, no problem, uh, which does cause problems right up the front there. So there you go, that's the core. Um, let's just flick these key pins around, get the drivers out in a second. See, they use like dimple pins where they've got the, the end bit that goes down and they've got the stopper here. So, yeah, and then you can see we've got serrations on these one, two, three, and four of them. So, if you overset them, which is really easy to do, they've got little beveled tops on them. They overset extremely simply and then they get stuck that way and you just got to reset. There's it's hard to even tell that you've done it. Um, yeah, they just. Kind of suck. Um, all right, so in one we've got a spool, two is a spool, three is these like serrated, whoop, come on, focus, serrated top and bottom, standard section in the middle, and quite a tapered lip on them. and six, and then we just have springs, which are all the same. Quickly arrange those. All right, so there are our whoop, pins. So you can really see that tapered lip there on that one. It's a good example. And this one, so they are very effective, need quite a lot of tabs if you don't use extremely heavy tension. Um, and these spools, you might can just see there's a little bit of a tapered lip on them too. Um, so it didn't happen that pick, but they do get stuck as well. You think you've set it, but actually you're just riding on this edge lip and they just need a little tap tap. Um, yes, now if you are unlucky, if you're lucky-ish, like this one, um, what you actually want to make this lock a lot easier is counterintuitive to most locks. If I just put these back in quickly and demonstrate. Normally you would think the best place to make the lock easier is to have all of your spools in these high sections where the, the spooling is not coming into effect. But actually that will make this way harder because that just adds that tapered section in so you get more pins tapering. What you actually really want the spools to be is somewhere where they'll give a nice good false set. At least that way it sort of isolates the uh, like serrated ones from the spools and it, it picks like two three pin locks that way. If you lose the false set, it's either push up on the one you were just touching again or start over. So actually having the spools in the deeper ones makes it a lot easier. I've sort of played around with the, the uh, pinning a little bit, uh, but yes, they are definitely a difficult lock. Um, one of the harder blue belt ones I've done, but I think it would be somewhat bidding dependent. Um, like this one's got a lot of really, you know, you don't have to do a lot. Whereas if we had one with a lot more pinning action, you know, it could be a lot more difficult. Most of these serrations didn't really come into play, but they could have. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's the MMF NF2. You will probably never see me pick an NF1 or an NF3. I've learned my lesson on Nemeth. Never again.